Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about one of the most important topics of polymerization and that is copolymerization. When I talk about copolymerization, it is one kind of polymerization which helps in making most of the polymers that we use today. Most of the polymers we use today are not made up of same monomers. That means whatever my polymer is, it will be made up of a monomer. We'll study the technique of copolymerization and all the different reactants or monomers which are being used in this session. Polymerization. It resembles very closely to addition polymerization. Now what exactly is my addition polymerization? Addition polymerization is two reactants come together but when they come together they club in together. When they club in together they do not form any byproduct and finally form a product. But over here the reaction is polymerization reaction. So instead of reactants we will have monomers. So if I have two monomers which come together they club in together. When they club in together they will not form any byproduct. They'll just come, they'll attach themselves and once they attach themselves they will form the polymer. That is my addition polymerization. Now what is the difference between addition polymerization and copolymerization? Copolymerization is a type of addition polymerization but over here it will have two different monomers. That means two monomers which will do not belong to the same kind. They will belong to different elements and different types and they will have different properties. But these two different monomers will come together, club in together and form the polymer. In addition polymerization, if two monomers combine to form is known as copolymerization. Generally monomers of very high molecular weight are formed by this method. Now when I am saying copolymerization or addition polymerization, what I am trying to say is two monomers will come in together. If two monomers are coming together, they will have to form a bond. If they have to form a bond, they will have to lose something they have. But over here, the second statement I'm saying is it does not form any byproduct. So how will it form a bond without losing any atom of it? Maybe it has a double bond already in it. If the monomer itself has a double bond in it, so we can break the double bond and give the bond valencies to both the atoms or both the carbons or both the molecules containing that double bond. And because of that, that valencies will get the attachment. So over here, I'm not losing anything out of the monomer. I'm just breaking the double bond. And once the valencies are given away, the next monomer can attach itself to it. Over here, we have certain examples of such monomers. The first example is vinyl chloride. Vinyl chloride is nothing but C double bond C. If you see over here, I have double bond between the two carbons. And these two carbons contain a chlorine. So this is vinyl chloride. So on polymerization, what will happen? Let us count the number of atoms on both the sides. I have one chlorine over here, one chlorine over here. One carbon over here, one carbon over here. One hydrogen, one hydrogen. Second carbon, second carbon, two hydrogens over here, two hydrogens over here. That means I have not lost anything out of the monomer. Even after polymerization, the monomer is as it is. But you can see that this carbon has got one valency and this carbon also has got one valency. To this carbon, something can get attached over here. To this carbon, something can also get attached over here. And because of these attachments, this monomer will become a polymer. But from where did this carbon get this valency and this carbon get a valency? It's from here. So the double bond breaks over here. When the double bond breaks, this carbon gets its valency. This carbon also gets its valency. And because of this carbon getting its valency, it will get something attached over here. And this carbon will also get something attached over here. The only difference is this is vinyl chloride, but this will become polyvinyl chloride. Why polyvinyl chloride? Because this was a monomer, but now this has become a polymer. So N times vinyl chloride on breakage or on cleavage of the bond that is the double bond will form polyvinyl chloride which is my polymer. So over here always on monomer side we write N over here but on polymer side we write N over here. This is something which we have to remember the monomers on polymerization become this polymers. Let's have another example of the same kind N times a monomer on polymerization becoming a polymer. 
this is a styrene on polymerization i will write polystyrene this is the only difference the naming over here whatever the monomer is on polymerization becomes poly times the monomer so this is polystyrene over here also on my monomer side the n is over here but on my polymer side the n will come down here now let us see what exactly happens to these monomers this is my styrene styrene is nothing but a benzene ring with C double bond C. We all need to understand that benzene ring itself has double bonds which are alternative but we do not break those double bonds. We will never break double bonds which are inside my benzene ring because benzene ring is nothing but a cyclo ring. You cannot break the bonds inside because of those alternating double bonds and because of the resonance of those alternating double bonds the benzene ring is stable. Imagine if the benzene ring one of the bonds you break off. If one of the bonds you break this ring will have only two double bonds left between them because if two double bonds are left between them it would be no longer an aromatic ring the double bonds will not resonate properly and the benzene ring will become highly unstable and because of that we never break any of the bonds which are present inside my benzene ring this circle will remain as it is the only bonds that we break over here are these bonds now over here for example instead of benzene ring if i would have a phenol what is phenol oh group so instead of c double bond c if i have an oh group it will not help in polymer at all though it has double bonds inside the benzene ring why because we are never going to break any of the bonds which are inside the benzene ring over here fortunately outside the benzene ring I can see a double bond between the two carbons this is C double bond C and you can easily break off one of the bonds the double bond of it once you break off the double bond this carbon gets its own valency this carbon gets its own valency and that is the reason why over here when we show the product or the polymer of it when i am making the double bond this carbon is getting its valency this carbon is also getting its valency and that's the reason why you call this as polystyrene so where the monomer was styrene on polymerization it became polystyrene n times monomer has become a polymer over here and double bond has broke and now whatever will get attached will get attached over here so there will be an attachment over here or there will be an attachment over here it won't get attached over here or here because there's no attachments over here. there are no valencies over here and that's the reason why all the attachments will be either over here or over here finally coming to the most commonly used polymer teflon tetrafluoroethylene now it is very important to understand the name first tetra tetra in chemistry tetra is four when you have di as two tri as three when you have four groups or four compounds it's known as tetra so tetra means four fluoro means fluorine that means my compound should have four fluorine groups so and then it's an ethylene over here what is ethylene ethylene comes from ethane ethane is two carbons and it is ethylene that means it's an alkene alkene means a double bond two carbons having a double bond and has four fluorines attached to it is nothing but my tetrafluoroethylene also known as teflon so this is my two carbons over here and over here two carbons attach themselves with a double bond or connected by a double bond and having tetrafluoro that means having four fluorine groups so how many are over here one two three and four so this is my tetrafluoroethylene this is nothing but my monomer it has n tetrafluoroethylenes over here but when we go on the polymer side this n will come down over here and whatever is the name of the monomer you just write a poly in front of it so it becomes poly tetrafluoroethylene now what happens over here again there will be a cleavage or a breakage of a double bond over here once the double bond breaks this carbon will get its valency this carbon gets away its valency and because both of these carbon will get its valency it is like this C single bond C and over here the carbon is getting one valency over here the carbon is getting one valency. So over here things can get attached over here also things can get attached and this monomer becomes a polymer. So now whenever I speak that things can get attached on both the ends, what are those things which will get attached? What are those subcompounds or substances which will get attached? It is nothing but these monomers. There are many such monomers going polymerization at the same end. And when all these monomers get valencies, they themselves attach to each other. So now in all the examples you saw that all the monomers were becoming polymers but there was no formation of byproduct. There is no formation of byproduct. I have not written plus and some byproduct here. I have not written plus and some byproduct here. And that's the reason why these are known as addition polymerization processes or copolymerization processes. All the above examples are of chain polymerization wherein the chain is being made. Let us take one of the most important and most common example of my copolymerization. 
again let's repeat what we did copolymerization is addition polymerization that means two monomers will add together so let us see which are the two monomers over here first is one three butadiene when i talk about one three butadiene that means buta buta has four carbons and on first carbon and third carbon why i'm talking about first and third because it is one three there is a diene what is di in chemistry di means two ene means alkene that means in my butane butane is four carbons in my butane on the first carbon and third carbon i will have two double bonds so over here let me mark the number of carbons one two three and four so one two three and four carbons are over here on the first carbon i will have a double bond on the third carbon also i will have a double bond and that's the reason why one three butadiene when one three butadiene which is one of my monomer is in addition with styrene styrene is nothing but my benzene ring with c double bond c if you notice over here both my monomers have double bonds in them butadiene also has two double bonds benzene also has two double bonds now why does this happen because i know need the double bonds to break off and that's when both of the monomers will club together and form a polymer without giving away any byproduct so over here i have four carbons on my monomer these four carbons are these which are underlined over here so let us see one two three and four this is also one two three and four but what is the difference between this and this over here between one and two i had a double bond and between three and four i had a double bond do i have a double bond between here no i do not have a double bond between one and two over here but i have a double bond between 2 and 3 over here i have a double bond between 2 and 3 on my product side or on my polymer side but that is not the case in my monomer in my monomer i do not have a double bond between 2 and 3 that means one of the alkene that is one of the double bond you can take any of them is shifting from here to here over here i have shown the double bond between 1 and 2 which is shifting between 2 and 3 you can also show this one it depends correct so this has become double bond again the double bond between 3 and 4 is broken and finally i have my styrene what happens to the styrene now this styrene has c double bond c this double bond will break off and once this double bond breaks off this carbon gets its valency this carbon also gets its valency once both these carbons get its valency they will get attached to this butadiene as shown over here so this carbon has lost the double bond since it has lost the double bond it can get attached to this butadiene here which is shown as an attachment over here and this is nothing but my addition polymerization also termed as copolymerization so in today's session we studied about what exactly is copolymerization we studied the different monomers which are getting converted into polymers and one of the reactions of the copolymerization process thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ekida and subscribe to ekida